everybody. Thanks for tuning in. If you are new, welcome. If you are returning, thanks for joining us again. My name is Ziera and I'm the marketing manager here at Altitude and I'm Adam Smartson. I'm the Chief Strategy Officer at Altitude uh, in an entirely different room this week. It's great. We are. We yeah. are definitely a new setting. For those of you who don't know who Altitude is, we are a B2B marketing agency focused in the life sciences, manufacturing, and software. And today we have a pretty cool topic in store. This one is all about RFPs. So a little bit about what you should include in your RFP what the respondents might be expecting, right? And really what you could include to really heighten up your game. Absolutely. Uh, so what we did is we went out, we got some of the most common questions folks ask online uh, about delivering an RFP, right? These are questions from the folks who are actually putting it out there. Uh, what we wanna do today is answer from the agency perspective, uh, what we need uh, to see, uh, frankly, to give you the best response uh, that you can get you don't want to waste our time, uh, but critically, we don't want to waste your time. We want to give you exactly what you need as fast as possible. Uh, so that's what these questions are all about. And also, rumor has it, Adam, we might have a little surprise in store about a takeaway that you can use even to help build your RFPs. Absolutely. All right, so let's get started. So the first question is, who should we send the RFP to? Um, so on an individual level, you probably want to go with somebody in biz dev. You know, at our firm, that's Lewis Holzman. He's our head of business development. If you send it to me, if you send it to Andrew Stanton, our CEO, it might get missed. Uh, we just get a lot of emails in there. Uh, Lewis or our contact form are the best. That's gonna be the same in, in really most any agency, any marketing partner that you're looking for. In terms of how many agencies, agencies excuse me, should you send to, look, at, at the end of the day, we can't dictate that. Uh, what I can say is the more transparent you are about how many folks got it, the better response you're gonna get. If we know an RFP went to 100 firms, at that point, it, it feels like it's just price shopping. You're probably just trying to get some numbers on a page. Are we gonna give our best response to that? Probably not. Are we gonna put the eight, 10, 12 hours a good RFP response takes into that? You know, candidly know, and it, it's really not fair to ask, a ton of agencies to put a ton of time in if you know that it's it's really unnecessary uh, at the same time if we hear it's three or four you're gonna get your absolute you know best work from us we're gonna put a lot of time into that because three or four means we have a 25 to 33 percent chance of winning the business that's a whole lot better than one or two percent uh, critically though what we're looking here is a partnership um, we're trying to build something that lasts, so don't lie, right? Just be honest about it. If you're sending it to a ton, say you're sending it to a ton. It's, it's not a problem. No one's going to be offended by it. Uh, it's just going to dictate what we do and the amount of time we're able to put into it. So on that note, is it even worth having a pre-call? Uh, totally, right? Uh, definitely a big fan of a pre-call before we fill out even an RFI, let alone an RFP. We're going to get to know you. We're going to get to know what's going to help you uh, in your process. You're gonna to get to know us, and there have been times where we've had a call, and it's just clearly not a fit, right? Um, just obviously not what we do. Mm -hmm. They're looking for, let's say, billboards over on Route 22. Uh, we're not gonna be able to help. Uh, so even the best response in the world from us, even if we won the business, isn't gonna go all that great. So having that little bit of interpersonal uh, can really help. And what details do we need to include about the project? The more the better, right? The more the better. Ultimately, uh, we need to know what you're looking for. Uh, we need to know timeline. Timeline is a massive one, and we need to know, know a realistic timeline, right? If the ask is a website in two months, what you're gonna get back might be some folks who say they can do it. They're either lying to you because a website in two months is incredibly difficult, especially for an enterprise type of company. And beyond that, you're gonna get a lot of folks uh, ignoring it, right? A bigger agency or an agency that's really careful about their web work is gonna look at two months and probably say, we can't do this, we're not gonna waste the time to fill this thing out. Right, and I think it's super important, even on your end, for the people who are submitting the RFP for that timeline, because essentially, when the respondents look at it, it's gonna tell you how they value their work yep. and their service. Absolutely, right. Another big one is uh, metrics for success and goals. Uh, we need to know how a project is being measured and we need to know how an RFP response is being measured. 
if you're shopping on price, just be open and honest, right? We're shopping on price. Uh, that's completely fine. Uh, there's times where every agency can win on price and there's times where every agency can lose on price. Uh, but if that's clear, hey, sometimes it's just not gonna be a fit and that's okay. We won't waste our time and we're not gonna waste your time. If you're looking for you know, experience in the space and that's the number one criteria that you're putting on this, again, completely fair, completely fine, uh, but let us know so we can make sure that we're giving you what you want. Or conversely, we can tell you that boy, we've never worked with this particular type of company in this particular geography, in this particular sector. And it's fine, right? And you go about your day, you hire somebody who's gonna fit for you, and we're not gonna kill ourselves uh, trying to get the work uh, that we really shouldn't be winning. And how do we articulate those goals? Are we talking about including KPIs? Okay. How far do we go with that? Uh, love to see KPIs in RFPs. Uh, love to see critically uh, who is going to be evaluating this. Who are you trying to impress here? Uh, is it folks in the industry, right? We mm -hmm. see that a lot, and that's obviously the goal, right? You're trying to sell something. There's a lot of times, too, though, where the marketing team needs to sell their work up to the C-suite. So knowing that in advance, knowing that there's a hyper-involved board in advance can really help. Knowing that the PE or the VC is involved at an intimate level, uh, that can really help us as well. Uh, we'll be able to shape our response and our project plan uh, to exactly what you need to do uh, and know that we can impress the folks we need to impress. KPIs are helpful. Um, metrics are helpful. What I don't usually love to see is we're going to measure this on 10,000 visitors a month, right? Or you know, we, we got one one time for a digital ad plan that said 80 to one ROAS is, is mm. the minimum. Like it's just, there are these insane numbers that are picked out of nowhere. Yep. And anybody worth their salt is gonna see 80 to one ROAS and say, well, no, that's impossible and do what we did, which mm -hmm. is just you know, hit delete on the thing because we can't possibly succeed that. if yep. that's the measure for success. So if you do give a number, make sure it has like some reality to it. Mm -hmm. And then what about budget? Do we include that in the RFPs? And where does that go in the beginning, the middle, the end? Yeah, uh, kind of a similar story, right? Um, I don't need to see a number, right? I don't need to see this website's gonna be $50,000 or we have $11,000 a month to spend on a retainer. That says it's kind of scoped ahead of time. And all, all we're doing then is trying to jam a project plan into a number, not necessarily into the need. Mm -hmm. What I'd rather see is a range, uh, even if that range is, look, this is a website and we have four figures to spend or five figures to spend or 75 to 99, or look, we anticipate dropping 150K plus on this. That tells us really the level of seriousness uh, and the level of really size and effort uh, in the actual project. Uh, if we see a $4,000 website come in, it's probably not a fit for altitude, but we can refer you to folks that works really well for. Um, if we see a $150,000 website come in, on one hand, that's red meat. Obviously, we love big projects like that, uh, but we know that we need to get the resources ready, and we know that we need to get the planning ready, we know that we need the project managers ready, and we know that you know, the RFP itself is going to need a lot of detail uh, because you know, can a mid-sized agency handle a project of that size? Uh, the answer is absolutely yes, uh, but we should be asked to prove ourselves uh, on that level. At the same time, though, like I said, does it need to be the exact budget? I don't think that necessarily helps anybody, but a general range of what you're willing to spend and what you're able to spend, um, that's really good. So at this point, we're ready to send our RFP, yeah. right? So we send it. How do we know that respondents are qualified? I kind of like tests, right? Um, we're an agency, there's a lot of agencies out there. We all have testimonials, we all have case studies, we all have proof points, and agency A having a Fortune 500 person say they're awesome is the same as my, my agency having a Fortune 500 person say we're awesome. I don't know that those really make a difference. The case study that says we drove 300% you know, more website traffic than the month before, awesome. But we're marketers, we can all make numbers do what we want them to do. Uh, I think it's completely reasonable to ask uh, what someone would do in a specific scenario. I think it's completely reasonable to ask how they think about something. I think it's completely reasonable to ask them to write that down or record that or, or pitch that to you. That shows you the ability of an agency and the strategist in an agency to think through uh, a new scenario, mm -hmm. uh, to work with something that isn't exactly what they've done before, and to take a plan and customize it uh, to your needs because at the end of the day, you probably don't want our generic marketing plan, right? If you're hiring us, you want something specific for you. 
you should ask in a way that makes us show you that, that we're able to do that. Yep. And taking a step back here for a second, so what file format should we use or which one should we accept? Uh, not Excel. <laughs> not Excel. Um, the reason I say not Excel is uh, it's a really bad use of Excel uh, to gather responses to questions. Um, what you're doing there is you're organizing it, yes, in rows and columns, um, but it's not what Excel's made for. And essentially, they're going to spend yeah. more time figuring yeah. out Excel and how to respond yeah. rather than actually the thought that's going into yeah. those responses. Right. We're, we're trying to jam like semi-unstructured yep. content into a structured format. It, it doesn't work. It's super distracting. It's super hard to work in. Now I'm worrying about my carriage returns in my list rather than actually giving you what you need. The other thing Excel says to me as the agency is you're sending this to so many people that maybe this doesn't matter for me, right? There's so many people getting this that they have to try to organize it in rows and columns. Am I gonna put my best foot forward? Maybe not, because there might be 50, 60, 100 agencies getting this thing. Uh, it's much more effective for us to answer in Word, uh, in Google Slides, uh, in Google Docs, right? something that's a little more free form where we can actually answer and give uh, the type of detail uh, that you're looking for. Now, Excel does work, uh, in the case of very specific questions, right? If we're bringing data validation to the party mm -hmm. or check boxes to the party, totally, that's completely fine. But as soon as it gets free form with the types of questions and open-ended answers I was describing before, uh, please not Excel, it's gonna make everybody's life worse. We're just gonna get distracted by it. This is not me being anti-Excel. I am very a true. huge Excel proponent, yes, <laughs> right? Um, but you know, ultimately for this purpose, anything open-ended, it's just not a good use case for it. Yep. And then how long should we give agencies to respond? A couple weeks, a month is, is about right. Uh, if we see an RFP come in due next Tuesday, our thinking on the agency side is this is a rush. Uh, this is uh, potentially someone who's desperate, maybe someone who just needs a third bid to take to their board. It's really hard to take that seriously. And it's really hard in a couple of days to turn something around um, that's worth the time that you're putting in uh, on your end. Conversely, if we see something three, four months out, uh, what we tend to feel is it's maybe not a huge priority, maybe it might not even happen. Uh, so that far out, things can get forgotten, it can get deprioritized, rightly or wrongly. It's just the psychology of it, right? We all have other things to do like today. So two weeks, four weeks, that, that's about the, the right level that says yep. you're planning ahead, but it's not so far ahead that this is just like a pie in the sky fantasy. Yep, definitely. And then where do people start with RFP, right? It sounds like such a big word. Yeah. And how do they start? How do they even begin this process? And this is where we have something very special. In store. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, number one is the agency search. You found us on YouTube, which is great. You should send them to us, we like that. Um, but Google is a great resource here. Bing is a great resource. There's a ton of agency listing sites. Uh, and surely folks in your professional network have worked with good agencies. Uh, so getting that list is kind of the simple part. Uh, what you'll find on websites is we often kind of say the same things. So it's worth getting some uh, real opinions from folks you know and looking deep into industry experience. Like if you worked in the life sciences, you want an agency that knows the life sciences. Yeah. Same with manufacturing, same with enterprise software. The big flashy websites can be great. Does that mean they know anything about you know, spatial biology? Not necessarily. You wanna make sure that whoever you're going with is super technical yeah. and can understand your audience and how you serve. Yeah. 100%, right. If you need a B2C branding job for a CPG company, uh, we're probably not a fit, right? We're not gonna do uh, your new dairy product for the store. That's completely fine. You shouldn't call us for that. Uh, if you need branding for, like I said, a company in spatial biology, if you're working in other forms of biotech, if you're working in manufacturing, somebody like us makes a lot of sense here. Uh, then you actually mentioned doing the RFP. Uh, we have a builder for that. Uh, so we'll put the link in the description below. Um, basically what we've built is a wizard where you can enter the information that you need. Uh, what we'll do is format it for you. Uh, we'll give it back to you as a working Google Doc. We actually have a generative AI built in there as well. So we'll give a summary and a cover letter for you live. It takes about three minutes to actually fill the thing out. Once you're done, you have it effectively ready to send. You can just kind of copy and paste it out of the Google Doc and go. 
If you don't want to use our wizard, that's fine. We have other templates in there as well. So you can build the thing directly in Google Docs. You can build it in uh, Word. And I believe there's a PowerPoint format there as well. So you can go ahead and create this thing using our tools. It's going to guide you through the exact process uh, that we awesome. just went through here today and give your potential agency partners exactly what they need to give you the best response and save you the most time. That's great. Well, whether you guys were tuning in to learn something about building RFP or even starting your RFP journeys, or just tuning in out of curiosity, we hope you took something away from our video and we hope you were able to answer your questions today. Before you go, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And like Adam said, don't forget to check out our RFP builder below. Until next time, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks so much.